Mr. Firth admitted that he altered two resumes, replacing a two-month internship with 51 months of professional experience. On another occasion, he inflated seven years of experience to 12. He claimed that this was a mistake. He didn't have consent to manipulate the resumes. Isn't that correct? Mr. Firth. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we've mentioned this previously in previous testimonies, but we encourage the RCMP to investigation. Uh, into the Butler allegations, whether it's fraud over 5,000, um, because it, we believe it's going to exonerate us. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brant. He clearly didn't answer the question. I'll move on. How many other times has Mr. Firth altered materials and resumes to the government since 2015? Mr. Firth. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we, it's, it's a common practice to engage with a resource, understand, because not every, everybody's CV or resume completely aligns with requirements that are coming out. They may have the experience, but we just have to speak with them to qualify that. The Honourable Member from, the Honourable Member from Brantford Brant. I'm asking for the number, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Firth. Mr. Speaker, I don't have a number. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brant. Mr. First, actions amounted to forgery under the Criminal Code. He altered resumes to secure government contracts, thereby fleecing the Canadian taxpayer. Isn't that correct? Mr. Firth. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the allegations regarding the Butler resumes were on a contract that had already been awarded. Um, so these were task authorizations. No contract would have been deciphered either way by these resumes. It was one business. The Honourable Member from Brantford Brant. Mr. Firth's actions further constituted a fraud on the Government of Canada. Section 380 of the Code stipulates that everyone who by deceit, falsehood or other fraudulent means defrauds the public of any property, money or valuable security. Both offences are punishable by indictment and upon conviction he could face a maximum prison sentence of 10 to 14 years. Is he aware of that? Mr. Firth. Uh, again, Mr. Speaker, we're... Um Looking forward to the investigation by the RCMP because we believe it will incinerate us. I'd like to let the Honourable Member from Bradford Brant know that he has 25 seconds left on the clock. Mr. First, actions were not accidental but intentional. This was not a mistake. He knew his resource would not qualify for taxpayer monies without manipulating their experience. Does Mr. Fur think that the Prime Minister or the Liberal Cabinet Minister should be at the bar answering questions today instead of himself, or is he willing to go to jail for them? The Honourable, sorry, uh, Mr. Firth, please. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can I speak to my counsel, please? Mr. Firth? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I'm, I'm not even sure what the question is there. Yeah. Neither are we. Sure, I, I wish to inform the honourable member that his time has elapsed. The, let her have the. Well, I have to. I will, the the I, I the honourable. Uh, the, the honourable member, the honourable member from Brantford Brant, I'd like to inform him, and we will be able to show him this on the, on the record. But actually, by the time you had finished your question, you had already, already elapsed the time that you had had. I respect that, Mr. Speaker. Clearly indicated he didn't understand the question. In terms well, of fairness to Mr. Firth, he should be afforded an opportunity well, to be rephrasing the question. The Honourable Member, uh, the Honourable Deputy Government House Leader. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you started off today about talking about the importance of decorum, and I do not think it's appropriate for the member opposite to be challenging the Speaker when the rules, as you expressed them, were very clear. The time has expired. That means we move on to the next person, and he should not be challenging this chair. I appreciate uh, the intervention from the Deputy uh, Par Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. I'm going to take a moment uh, to consult on this matter.
The chair is going to permit uh, the honourable member from Brownford Grant to please put a question within 10 seconds, uh, so that the honourable, uh, so that the witness, Mr. Firth, can answer the question. Does Mr. Firth think that he should be solely responsible for this scam, or should the Prime Minister, the Liberal Cabinet Ministers, and certain members of the Liberal backbench should be at this bar facing consequences, here, legal here. consequences? Mr. Firth. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I'm sorry, I, again, I don't want to be elusive. I, I can't comment on this. That's kind of speculative, and I, I'm not sure what I can do here.